Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. So it's us again, Timin Van Adventures. And for today's video, we will do another reaction to Malaysia. And the video is all about foreigners who messy uh, foreigners who have. The, ha, uh, uh, <laughs> it's about a foreigner who's been locked down in Malaysia, and he wants to, to tell his experience of yeah of being locked down during the COVID crisis. Yeah. So let's hear. place where I feel at home. Malaysia, a place where I feel at home. A place where I do not feel alone. A place where my belly has grown. <laughs> wow. Going through what we've been through is just... What accent is that? It's just incredible. It, what the accent? Mm -hmm. I think it's a very... British? British accent. But it is... Let me, let me listen. It's surreal. I arrived here in March. And I think it might be a uh, Mancunian or Liverpool accent. And uh, you know, the, there's Manchester and Liverpool. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, uh, I could be very wrong, cross, but I think it's like a Northern English accent. Mm -hmm. But please keep, I'm sure some, some of our viewers know about this. Had full intentions of exploring. Yeah, I think it's Liverpool. Liverpool? Because there's a player called Steven Gerrard, a football mm. player. His, um... na his name is Steven Gerrard. Okay. That's how he talks. Exploring as much of the country as I could. I wanted to go to the East Coast, I wanted to go all over the place. Just a couple of weeks into March, whilst I was based in Kuala Lumpur, things started to happen with the COVID-19. And Malaysia very quickly jumped into action and started to introduce the movement control order. And during those first two weeks, there was lots of anxiety. I had- I feel you. That's how mm. I how we feel as well here. Um, be, um, so, so by the time we have already the lockdown, that's the time also our family texted us because mm. we never like update them or what. So, uh, we feel you that you know the anxiety, yeah. um, the sadness is there as well because uh, you know you're not with your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's 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 tough. And friends, family messaging me saying when. Are you coming home? Oh. I had the British government advising everybody to come home. If you're on holiday, come home. Essential that you come home, no travel. So I'm sat there thinking, what do I do? Do I go back home? Do I fly 20 hours to airports and go back to the UK? Or do I stay here in Malaysia? Very difficult decision to make. Especially when you've got family back home. Ah, uh, so I guess he's like, he's also on vacation? He's a tourist, yep. Oh, wow. Mm. I think he's a tourist. Oh. You know what, I feel you because you keep on crying to Tim as well. Yeah. I really want, I really miss also my family in the Philippines and I really want to go home. But of course, yeah. we live here in Singapore, but every six months or every four months or five months, I always go to Singapore, I to Philippines. Yeah. We to see my parents there. and to my family. So by the time you said that you want to see your family and everything, mm. oh my gosh. Yeah. That really hits me. It is tough, right? Especially it must be especially hard for this guy because he he doesn't he doesn't live in Malaysia. Whereas for us, it's easier because this is our base, right? Yeah. That you very much care for, and you don't want them to be infected. And I knew if I went back to the UK, I would have to live with my parents, and I wouldn't want to bring any virus into their home. Yeah. I wouldn't want them to fall ill due to the virus. When I saw Malaysia jump into action whilst the UK was kind of still open for business, <laughs> I made the decision that I am going to strand myself <laughs> in Malaysia and stay here and, and see it through whatever amount of time it was gonna take. I honestly thought it was just gonna be for a couple of weeks. I didn't realize that I would be locked down in my apartment for 11 weeks. Didn't oh leave gosh, the building for 11 crying? weeks. I have to say, I have been incredibly impressed with how Malaysia has handled the COVID-19 there. As I said, jumped straight into action with the movement control order. All of the state borders were, you know, had police and army making sure that people were not moving around. You could only go for food and essential things, essential products, go to the pharmacy, go to the doctors or dentist. You couldn't go exercising. They were very strict. When an area had a large number of cases, it was completely locked down. Barbed wire surrounding it. Soldiers there. 
and that's what needed to be done. It, it's not nice to see that image on TV of all neighbourhoods in barbed wire, surrounding with barbed wire, but it's what needs to be done. You need to be, you need to have strong leadership. And I feel like the Ministry of Health dealt with it fantastically. The frontliners dealt with it amazingly. I, I never get involved in politics. I never get involved in religion. I keep positive. I'm a positive person 90% of the time. <laughs> And oh my God, it's I feel what Malaysia I'm has done too. is a model for the rest of the world. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here. I really do feel that. It is a model that countries from around the world should be following because how they dealt with it was amazing. Every single person was trapped from the original case. And that's what you need to do. Quarantined for 11 weeks. I was shadow boxing to the Rocky theme tune. <laughs> that happened. I was weightlifting with water bottles. <laughs> that happened as well. I spent a lot of time looking out my window, just thinking, staring into space. And the only thing I could hear, silence and my breathing. Sound of birds occasionally. No cars on the roads. Yeah. So quiet, so surreal. It started to drive me a little bit mad and a bit crazy so i had to start putting on music pretty much all day long spotify <laughs> just playing all day you know what that's what we do as well it's like um if you're listening to the music we're doing vlogging because um we never do before like reaction video maybe once only and so like you know marcelito pomoy like a filipino um, singer so uh, he's the first one that we do reaction and like we're always on traveling we really yeah. love traveling so like every two months or three months we go to malaysia indonesia taiwan or like europe we really love to travel but you know yeah we love we love living here in singapore but we also really enjoy traveling traveling the region right mm. and it's, so yeah, by the that. time you say that you're like listening to the music we're doing that i'm dancing here as well alone mm. or what yeah and i really <laughs> want to go out to meet my friends but to go home in the philippines mm. but you know we just need to stay to be safe that's yeah. how it is ah yeah. don't 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 okay. because every time you touch your <laughs> way back i'm already crying so <laughs> i don't want it <laughs> yeah no i i, I feel you um Baby, it's tough, right? You'll uh, we'll, we'll go home soon enough, right? Uh, yeah. Next year, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stay alone, because the silence got to me. And when you are alone in an apartment for that amount of time, it can send you a little bit crazy. <laughs> I am so thankful for the people that contacted me. You know, people in Malaysia who live in Malaysia don't know me other than doing YouTube videos or on Twitter or Instagram. And um, people were so caring and asking me how I was. Was I, you know, was I needing anything? And that didn't make me feel as alone. That made me feel better that I had people there looking out for me. I was able to keep in touch with my parents, and my parents did amazing. My mum and dad, because they self-quarantined themselves for. You know, well before the government started to recommend that people quarantine themselves. It was a crazy time and certainly one that I don't want to have to live through again. What I was surprised about is when I went to the immigration office to extend my visa, Chaos Central was dead, the metro was dead. This was probably back end of April, beginning of May and that made me realise that people here took this really seriously and the people are part of the reason why that, that this hasn't been as bad in Malaysia as it has been in other countries. When you look at the figures so far, I don't want to tempt fate, but when you look at the figures so far compared with the UK, Italy, Spain, America, Russia, and I think that a lot of it is down to the people. Just people stayed at home, people locked down. Yeah, I think one thing I'm noticing about uh, Malaysia, and I think it's true for Singapore as well, that is that I think there's a good community spirit here, right? A lot of volunteers, a lot of people who are like helping each other out. So I think that's definitely true. This is what uh, that's that's the best thing as well in Malaysia. 
and even here in Singapore actually and we did a lot of reaction to Malaysia and and what we're gonna say it's really you know uh, that kind uh, um, um that country is really awesome because um as we can see you guys really help each other wow yeah the community there is, is quite strong thanks to you too because it could have been so much worse but I just want to say thank you Malaysia for looking out for me for Aww. looking after me for those people that approached me and asked me if I was okay and if I needed anything uh, thank you for Clement for looking out for me keeping in touch and and giving me a, a safe home to live in over these last um, five months nearly <laughs> and very soon I'm gonna be going on a road trip for four Go weeks home soon. So I'll talk about that in a future video. And yeah, thank you to the frontliners. Thank you for putting your life in danger every single day. Thank you to those amazing men and women who delivered my food every day. And... You can do that. Oh God, we're getting some. Yeah, great message. Um... I'm thinking what what phase are they in right now in Malaysia, right? Because here in Singapore we have the different phases, right? We have phase two here in Singapore. Mm. That and means you can still kind of you can still go out and meet people a little bit more, right? Yeah, but we need to like you know um, the people that you can see it's only like limited or what. Mm. The group of people, yeah, and we also wearing masks still. So when we go out, actually, especially me. Um, I'm bringing like sanitizer, alcohol, and of course we're wearing masks. Go to go out, and um, we never go much to restaurants or like malls mm. because of course we know that it's still there. So we still we so we still need to um, you know to be safe, to take care, and to be how to say, and to be aware Sensi in everything. Sensible, right? Yeah. yeah, to be sensible because you know mm. what, um, it's not done yet. We still need to. We still need to be safe always. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So and of course we need to help each other. That's it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. What an emotional video. <laughs> I'm a bit emotional here. Thank you so much. Please Terima. don't forget to like and subscribe. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Bye bye. Kasi. bye, -bye.